What do we do with a drunken sailor? <coughs> what do we do with a drunken sailor? What do we do with a drunken sailor? <coughs> Early in the morning. Oh, excuse me. I've been in the purgy mood, what with playing Assassin's Creed Black Flag last month, and playing Sid Meier's Pirates this month. I'm really feeling in the privateering mood. Arr. Sid Meier's Pirates! Exclamation point is an open-world RPG pirate adventure game with elements of strategy, stealth, management, sword dueling, and naval combat. Basically, this game has way more in it than I ever expected or imagined it would have. Sid Meier's Pirates was developed by Firaxis Games and released July 2005. Actually, let's just really quickly address my perspective on the game. I picked up my copy from a humble bundle with several other Sid Meier games. I specifically got the bundle for Civilization V's DLC, but I picked up this little gem too. Naturally, the first thing I judged the game by was its Steam Store page, and this was an injustice. You see, Sid Meier's Pirates has a terrible case of what I call the PlayStation Face. Although to be more time correct, I should say the PlayStation 2 Face, since Sid Meier's was released in 2005. When I say a game has a case of the PlayStation Face, it's that the face looks somewhat realistic, they were going for a realism look, but it's still blocky and cartoony. And even jumping into the game, it didn't do itself any favors by not supporting 1920 by 1080 resolutions. So I left it alone to look like a Lego. I can play games that look good and bad with graphics, I'm just looking at the games are reviewed on this channel alone. The story for Pirates is simple, quick, and concise. Your family was taken away, and you're trying to get them back. Hello, we've taken your family, mostly composed of a sun con, you're a Quaker parrot, and like 20-something fish. I don't know who you are. I don't know where you came from. But I will find you. And I will kill you. Look, man, you can pick them up whenever you want. I can elaborate on the story, but there's really not much else to say for the start of the game. Starting out, you're a little kid, and your family gets jumped by some corrupt nobles. Then you fast forward, and you're a full-grown man joining either the Spanish, Dutch, English, or French ship to the New World. It's your choice who you wish to join. Your ship mutinies, and BAM! You do what you want, cause a pirate is free! You are a pirate captain! Something I was not expecting at all from pirates was you technically do whatever you want right after the story's cutscenes are done. Don't believe me? Okay, I guess you can't divide up the spoils until you have spoils, but once you do, you can retire from pirating, essentially quitting the game. But enough about that, let's talk about how you play, hmm? First thing first, the game can be controlled by mouse, but it will tell you in various notifications not to do so unless you're on a laptop or device which doesn't have a number pad key. You see, today we forsake the Wasid Gaz and kneel before a new one. In 789, 456, 123, we trust. Yeah, it, it, it just doesn't have the same ring as Wasid, does it? Ah, well. You control the game with the number keys. There are several different view modes you'll run into. By that, I mean you'll have a set of controls while sailing, and a set of controls while attacking in naval battles, and a set of attacks and counterattacks while dueling, and a set of movements while stealthing, and a set of moves while in strategy combat city attack mode, and a set of moves while dancing with the governor's daughters. Ending with that one might sound like a joke, but I'm actually serious, that's a big part of the game. Generally speaking, if there's any turning, you will use the 4 and 6 keys, and the 8 and 2 keys to move forward and back. If even available. Most of the other keys will jump around depending on what you do, so let's just cover them all, I guess. I'm not going anywhere, and clearly you're sticking around. What, have you got something to do? No you don't. Who are you trying to impress? Me? Oh, well. I'll need to think of a retort. I'll get back to you on that one. 
While sailing freely, you can pause the game with 7, you can set the sails to full with 8, basically setting the sails to full means the wind will affect your ship more, and change the view with 9. This will let you toggle between stationary third person camera mode or behind the ship camera mode. 4 is to turn left, 5 is to attack. If there are multiple ships or cities nearby that you can attack, there will be a notification pop-up that you can use to select between them. And 6 is to turn right. 1 is to check your fleet status, 2 is to reef sails. Reefing your sails makes your ship less affected by winds and will also increase your turning speed. Beware changing sails too often though, if your crew is changing sails they can't reload weapons at the same time. But that's not something to worry about until fighting another ship. Lastly, the third button is used to see your map. Moving on to naval combat. When you decide to engage in warfare on the high seas, do keep in mind several things. Your location, the enemy ship's location, and the direction the wind is blowing. Either you or the other ship can escape by sailing away and getting far enough off the battle map. You can also sink the enemy ship if you bombard them from afar, but you need to board them by crashing into them if you want that sweet, sweet loot. Regarding the buttons and what they do, 7 is your chain shot, which is more likely to damage the enemy's sails. 8 is for full sails, you will start in full sails mode. And 9 to change view, just like in the sailing view. 4 is to turn left, 5 is to fire your cannons, and 6 is to turn right. Do keep in mind that you need to have your ship facing the right direction, because your cannons will always fight, fire off out at the side of the ship. For people that are familiar with ship and naval combat at the time, this is pretty standard procedure. However, to a lot of people that think, oh, we can just shoot it from the front. Nope, the guns are located on the starboard and port sides. One is Grape Shot, which will hurt the enemy crew. This is very useful before boarding fights against enemy pirates, by the way. Two is Reefed Sails, and three is Round Shot. This is the default damaging shot. So a few things before we move on. You can't actually use Chain Shot or Grape Shot unless your ship has those upgrades. You can get these upgrades from different ports and cities you visit, or just snagging an already upgraded ship and setting it as your flagship. While dueling, you have three attack moves, three defense moves, and one taunt. You know, because good sportsmanship. Seven is Chop, four is Thrust, one is Slash. Each attack has different timing, Thrust is the fastest, Chop is a middle speed attack, and Slash takes the longest. 8 is Jump, 5 is Parry, 1 is Duck. Each defensive move corresponds with a certain attack. Now would be a very good time to mention the game's difficulty. If you're a good adventurer, like myself, you started out on an easy difficulty because you're unfamiliar with these troubled waters. This is what I did. The game basically holds your hand and teaches you like the kindest of teachers. I thought to myself after playing through half of the game, Okay, this isn't that bad. Let's up the difficulty. So I notched it up a few levels to an intermediate difficulty level. Mistakes were made. Suddenly, my chill, borderline, boring game became a struggle for survival. Gone are the helpful light-up hints while dancing and dueling. Now I had to rely on watching for telegraphed movements and learned more advanced strategies. And basically the game stopped holding my hand and I had to figure out how to actually play it for real. It was scary. Next, let's talk about dancing. That's a sentence I must admit I never thought would come out of my mouth. As you rise in ranks with the different nations, you will meet various governors and their daughters. The daughters come in three different types. Plain, attractive, and beautiful. You can only dance with the plain daughters when you are the rank of captain. And colonel for attractive daughters and Baron to dance with the beautiful girls. There's something unsettling for me referring to the governor's daughters in this way. Maybe it's just that I feel like my mom is judging me. Ignoring the ethical problems with labeling the poor girls this way, basically the idea is the more higher social status the girl, the more complex the dance sequence. When dancing, you can mostly ignore 7, 9, and 5 in this game mode. 8 is forward, 2 is backwards, 4 is left, 6 is right, 1 is turn right, 3 is turn left. Do notice the hand signals and the numbers representing the hand signals. Your dance partner will give you these same hand signals to tell you which way to go. 
that's useful when you get out of handhelding mode. Also, if you want to add a bit of flair to your dance to impress her, hit the button exactly when she nods and you'll do a nice little twirl effect. I have a confession to make. For some strange reason, I found this kind of hot and alluring. Maybe it was just the low-cut blouses. Funny story, though. My character married a beautiful girl from the port of Kit, and later I increased the difficulty and no longer had the helpful light-ups at the bottom right of the corner, and I lost all of my ability to dance. All of it. I then realized I couldn't go and dance with my wife. I couldn't dance with her because I wasn't skilled. This seems to be immoral all too real to me. Oh, by the way, there are three states after a dance. If you dance poorly, the girl looks remarkably disgusted with you, and you don't get any reward. If you dance acceptably, she'll give you some useful information. If you really impress her, you sweep her off her feet and you get some fan service camera angle. The final two modes are the modes I barely used. While in strategy mode, you move your units around and attack from pretty much the number pad representing the arrow keys. 8 is up, 2 is down, 6 is right, 4 is left, 9 is diagonal right up, 7 is diagonal left up, 1 is diagonal left down, 3 is diagonal right down. You have range units, melee units, cover, it's pretty standard, but definitely a tricky game mode. While in stealth mode, you use the keys for movement, and you sneak around town trying to get to the governor's mansion and knocking out any guards from behind. Generally, you only get into strategy or stealth mode if a faction hates you so much that they won't let you come into port, and will fire their cannons at you. Now this happens if you get a little bit too zealous with your pirating, and that did happen to me quite a bit. You also need to succeed with the strategy mode if you fight the final boss, that being the guy who is responsible for exiling your entire family. But again, you don't ever really need to do that. You can just go pirate by yourself and do whatever you jolly well feel like doing. Before we wrap up this review, I will regale you the tale of Captain Atratsu of the SS Anne. After his family had been taken from him and he became a pirate, Atratsu christened his ship the SS Anne. If you've never played the first generation of Pokemon games or don't know Pokemon, that's the ship you get HM1 cut on. Believe it or not, one of my friends don't doesn't know, so I'm gonna guess there are more crazy people out there that won't get this joke. So yeah, there you go. Da -da -da. Anyway, Atratu set sail on his mighty vessel. Yes, it was lightweight. Yes, it was lightly crewed. But Atratsu was a master swordsman. Mostly because he was playing on the easiest difficulty. Don't judge me! Yes, things were going well for Atratsu. He even got promoted to captain for his service to the English. Little did they know that he jumped English ships just as regularly as any other kind of ship. So now Atratsu was Captain Atratsu of the SS Anne, boldly going where no Pokemon trainer had gone before. Until that fateful day he hunted down the dreaded pirate Captain Kidd. Captain Kidd had a brig of war, which could house double of Atratsu's very own crew. And that was when Atratsu learned a valuable lesson. Do not board a ship when you have a crew of 20 or 30 shipmates, and the enemy has 100 to 150. You see, no matter how great Atratsu's sword play might be... Go ahead and take that out of context, by the way. No matter how great Atratsu's sword play was, he could not defeat the captain before the crew of the SS Anne was defeated. DEFEATED! The great pirate Atratsu was abandoned on a desert island. He filled his face with chocolate chip cookies in despair until a ship from his fleet picked him up. Later, Atratsu would return and defeat Captain Kidd, and take Kidd's vessel for his own, and rename it the SS Sucker Punch. Atratsu had learned his lesson. There was a few close calls where he almost didn't have enough crew to take an enemy vessel, but he never lost the SS Sucker Punch. 
the ship was fully upgraded and became the scourge of all who saw it. Not nearly as nimble as the SSN, but making up with speed with guns, guns, guns! And that is the story of Pirate Captain Atratsu in Sid Meier's Pirates! Exclamation point. In closing, Pirates is a good game. I really enjoy the amount of control you have over your character. Like I've expressed, it completely caught me by surprise just how good the game really is. I guess I was expecting some type of RPG, but it turned out to be more of an open world game. It also tricked me into learning geography. Unforgivable! I know, right? I can actually find my way around a map of the Caribbean Sea. Color me impressed. That's more than I can say for most games. True, most games take place in a fictional world, and I learned those maps quite well, but this game succeeded in combining pirating and geographical know-how. Many quests only give you the location and where the person will be sailing from, so you're forced to learn the various locations around the map. There's still so much I haven't said about the game. If this game is rotting somewhere in your backlog, you should definitely give it a try. And if you're just looking to see if you'd be interested in this game, hopefully this review helped you decide. But hey, we're at the end. Thank you so much for sticking through this video to the end. You know, not everyone does that, and for those of you that do, it really means a lot to me. Stay tuned for more reviews. My name's Atratsu, and I approve this review. Morning.